Subaru is known for practicality, so what is going on here? is a bit of a rare bird. For one thing, it holds the distinction of being the only car in the Subaru lineup that does not come with standard all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive isn't even an option on the BRZ, and that's for fairly obvious reasons, right? This car was made for tarmac, not terrain. It was designed and purpose-built to be an affordable sports car, and along with its Toyota counterpart, now known as the GR86, this car has spent the last decade earning a place in the hearts of enthusiasts worldwide. The name BRZ is an acronym. It stands for Boxer Rear Wheel Drive Zenith. Zenith as in peak or apex or pinnacle. And yet, Subaru has managed to improve upon the peak BRZ of the past with the all new second generation. Let's check it out. But first, please subscribe to this channel. And quick reminder, CarGurus now lets you leverage our network of thousands of dealers to sell your car 100% online. Just plug in a little bit of information, get an offer, get your car picked up, get paid. I would venture a guess that the BRZ is one of those few cars that even people who don't care about cars can recognize, like the Volkswagen Beetle or the Chrysler PT Cruiser. For this new generation, the BRZ does retain its distinctive shape, but it's got a significant styling update. Word is that Toyota took charge of design while Subaru handled engineering for 2022. Both the BRZ and the GR86 got new fender vents and taillights, and they each got their own new headlights. The new generation rides on the same platform and it's still exactly the same width as the very first BRZ, 69.9 inches, but the way the hips flare makes it appear wider, in a good way. The integrated spoiler seems to be taking a leaf out of Supra's style book, which I would argue is very much worthy of emulation. That's a good looking rear end. I also really like the double bubble roof shape, which was first pioneered by Zagato for race cars in the 50s. There are just two trims, premium and limited. We have a sapphire blue limited model today, which means that we get the 18 inch wheels with the grippier Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. The premium trim comes with 17 inch wheels and Michelin Primacy tires. The BRZ is a two plus two, which basically means the rear seats are an afterthought. Otherwise we just call it a four seater, but the term two plus two is more honest because we've got two seats here. And then we have two cubbies on a parcel shelf masquerading as seats. Now this is in my driving position. I can just about fit in here behind myself because I have to sit pretty far forward to get the clutch all the way to the floor. I would not want to sit here for more than a few minutes. My feet are actually underneath the seat in front. And this is where my six foot tall videographer's chair would have to be. And there's no way that you're getting anybody in behind him. But let's be honest, passenger volume is probably not what has you really interested in this car. You just need to know if you are going to fit into it, not if your friend's kids will be able to fit into it. So here's the info that you need. It has 37 inches of front seat headroom and 41.5 inches of front seat legroom. The redesigned interior feels very utilitarian. The front seats are heavily bolstered because it's a sports car. Leather upholstery is standard and the limited version gets red contrast stitching and ultra suede, aka imitation Alcantara. Alcantara is one of those things that's trickled down from high-end sports cars and become the cool option. And I get it, it's grippier, it holds you in place during faster driving, but I really don't like it. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I like a seating surface that you can wipe off and I can't look at Alcantara or Ultra Suede without thinking about how shiny it's going to become when it's worn and how irreversibly gross it's going to be if it gets dirty. The worst is Alcantara wrapped steering wheels. Ugh, hate that. But Fortunately, in the BRZ, a leather-wrapped steering wheel is standard. Subaru knows its audience and does not quote cargo volume numbers, but you can famously carry four tires in the back if you fold the rear seats down. The second gen BRZ also gets a new, bigger engine. It's still the classic Subaru Boxer Flat 4, but it's now 2.4 liters, where it was just 2 liters in 2020. Note that Subaru and Toyota both skipped the 2021 model year while they were preparing the second generation. It's still naturally aspirated, no turbo or superchargers here. 
The new engine makes 228 horsepower up from 205, and with increased displacement comes more torque. It now makes 184 pound-feet of torque as compared to 156. And the infamous torque dip that plagued the first generation is vastly improved. Subaru says the BRZ will do 0 to 60 in 6 seconds with the manual, or 6.5 with the automatic, and as stick shift fans rejoice, the 6-speed manual transmission is standard. You can choose to pay extra for the 6-speed automatic with the paddle shifters if you prefer. I'm not here to judge. Maybe you are, though. Let us know what you would choose in the comments. And do note that you do get better gas mileage with the automatic transmission, 25 miles per gallon combined as opposed to 22 with the manual. Both transmissions have been modified for 2022. The automatic was retuned for faster downshifts and the manual was tweaked for a better shifting feel. Even though it's on the same platform as before, the new BRZ has a lower center of gravity thanks to the fact that it's 1.2 inches longer and 0.4 inches lower. It's 17 pounds heavier than the old one, but it would take a real princess in the P situation to notice the difference. It's heavier than, say, a Miata, but unlike the Supra, it's still well under 3,000 pounds, thanks in part to the aluminum roof and fenders. This is a nice handling car. The steering feels really direct and quick, and it's nicely balanced. I haven't caught it trying to oversteer or understeer during some spirited driving. And you get that smooth power delivery that you'd expect from a naturally aspirated engine. I will say it has pretty short gearing, which took a little getting used to, but that's really par for the course of a car like this. Shorter gearing equals more shifting, and in a lower power sports car, more shifting means more smiling. Speaking of smiling, Subaru has really worked to make this a more pleasant car to drive for folks who like to take it on weekend road trips or who maybe live 40 or 50 miles from their local autocross. It's quieter than the old BRZ, though that may surprise you if you're not super familiar with a boxer engine, and it's got a bit of a more comfortable ride. Within the context of BRZ, this is a significant tech upgrade for the new generation. It's now got a digital gauge cluster which displays the tachometer prominently and will automatically switch to a graph layout when you engage track mode. It also has a larger 8-inch touchscreen. If you've been in some other new vehicles recently, this might feel a little basic and some of these buttons are starting to seem almost retro. What really saves all of this from seeming like a 10-year-old car is this trio of climate knobs here with their integrated digital displays. But let's be honest, it's probably not primarily the tech that has you interested in this car. You probably just need to know if it checks a few boxes. Does it have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? Yes. Does it have Sirius XM? Yes. Does it have Bluetooth? Yes. Those are all standard. Good to go. Subaru's EyeSight suite of driver assistance technologies is now standard on BRZs with the automatic transmission, which makes a lot of sense. It's a lot harder to make things like adaptive cruise control and automatic emergency braking work with a manual transmission, and Subaru is not alone in deciding that it's just not economical to do so. All 2022 BRZs do have blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assist, rear cross traffic alert, and steering responsive headlights. The 2022 Subaru BRZ starts at $28,955 for the base premium trim with the manual transmission. That does include the $960 destination fee. The limited trim, which we drove today, starts at $31,455 with a manual. Opting for the automatic transmission will add $1,600 to the premium price or $1,800 to the limited. Before we get to the blatantly obvious competitor, let's talk about some of the other options. They might include the Mazda Miata, though that is convertible only, or the Nissan Z, although that's about 25% more expensive minimum. The four-cylinder versions of the Ford Mustang and Chevy Camaro might also figure into your shopping. They're certainly bigger than this, but they're also front-engined, rear-wheel drive coupes with manual transmissions in a similar price range. Let's be real, you watch this long, you're really interested in the BRZ, right? In that case, it's a no-brainer to also consider the Toyota GR86. It's just impossible to categorically recommend one without taking the other one into account as well. The GR86 has a very similar starting price of $28,925, including destination. The two models do differ a little bit in value proposition. They both come with a 5-year, 60,000-mile limited warranty and a 3-year, 36,000-mile basic warranty, but Subaru does not include the free 1-year membership to the National Auto Sports Association Association, and Toyota also throws in two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary scheduled maintenance. 
Subaru and Toyota handled the suspension and engine tuning independently, so the two cars will have different driving dynamics. You don't often get two vehicles that are so similar competing in the same segment, so it's a great opportunity for you to find out how sensitive you are to a car's characteristics. Don't feel bad if you don't notice a huge difference. That just means that you have more options. For more on the Subaru BRZ and any of its competitors, head over to cargurus.com to read our full written reviews and to see the data that we've compiled. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and check back soon because we'll be driving something else next week.